AI Agent, AI PBR Material Snap, Enhanced AI Features, Upgraded Real-Time Path Tracing, Parallel Projection, Advanced Brush and Custom Path Tools are some of the new features in D5's latest update that I was not expecting, but it surely got me excited. And instead of running through every feature, I want to walk you through the ones that actually helped me work faster, think less, and stay creative. Let's take a closer look. D5 Launcher replaced the old welcome page, and honestly, it's a solid upgrade. It integrates access to D5 Render, D5 Lite, and D5 Sync. You've also got quick access to recent files, workspace tabs, project settings, and user login. It also enables direct downloads, installation, and updating of new releases all in one place. In line with this, all future updates will progressively integrate additional D5 tools and resources. And since it automatically goes to the system tray, you can jump right back into it anytime without relaunching. It seems like a small thing, but it makes the whole experience feel smoother and more practical. Here's where the update really surprised me. AI is now part of the workflow. There's now an AI agent built right into D5, tucked in the top left corner. You can ask it anything D5 related and it walks you through the steps. It's like having a built-in assistant inside D5 Render. It comes with three key features, Smart Planting, Plant Schedule, and the D5 Bot. Let's start with Smart Planting. Instead of manually placing assets across your scene, pick one of the three presets provided and it will automatically generate a customizable prompt. Just tweak the highlighted words or type in your own based on the project location, color palette, climate or season, and it will do its magic. Once it's done, you'll get a tailored plant list, complete with names, season interests, and more. All that's left to do now is click on the Auto Scatter button to apply it straight to your scene. But if you want more control, adjust probability ratios in the Inspector tab or use the Brush Cull tool under the Effects section to remove unwanted areas. And here's something special. The plant list it just created can also be exported, complete with all the necessary information. Now that's super useful when you're working with a landscape team or preparing a proposal. You can even upload your own plant quotation file for cost estimate calculations. And finally, if you ever get stuck, there's a D5 bot ready to help. It can guide you through tools, answer questions, or troubleshoot, all without leaving the interface. It's one of those features that blends into your workflow. This next feature is something I didn't expect to use as much as I have. Now you can generate high quality, ready to use physically based rendering materials. Just upload a reference image, maybe from your site photo, Pinterest, or mood board. Next, pick the area you want to sample, and D5 will generate a material you can actually use. It's that simple. You can apply it directly to your scene or save it to your local archive. Plus, it recommends similar assets from D5's extensive online library. It's easy, fast, and efficient. It's not just about the new features. This update also brings some solid improvements to existing tools like AI Atmosphere Match and Post AI. Overall, they feel faster, smoother, and more responsive. AI Atmosphere Match now does a better job at reading your current scene and suggesting three lighting setups that align with the composition. Some options land better than others, but when it works, it saves you a lot of time. It comes in handy when you're rushing for tight deadlines or when you just need a solid starting point. If you want more control and accuracy, you can still upload your own reference image. Once applied, you get a slider to fine-tune the strength level of the effect. Post AI now includes a texture strength slider, giving you a bit more control over how much detail gets enhanced in your final render. It's subtle, but just nice when you want to dial back on stylization or you just want to enhance realism without going overboard.
Overall, the processing feels faster. Nothing dramatic, but noticeable if you've used these features in earlier versions. By the way, path tracing is now enabled by default. It's a small change, but it takes one more thing off your plate, so you can stay focused on the visuals. Let's have a closer look and use the water reflections as a test and compare our real-time preview against our final render output. Let me set this up real quick and place both subjects side by side so it's easier to compare. It's hard to tell the difference. There's a significant improvement on render output efficiency. Think about how much time you save when a client asks for progress and you can just send a screenshot from a real-time preview that actually looks decent. Now that's the kind of efficiency that actually makes a difference. Another update worth mentioning is parallel projection. It's never been easier to create those axonometric and orthographic views, especially now that it supports camera roll. No more second guessing. Orthographic and isometric views now snap perfectly with a single click. It's a smoother way to generate quick volumetric studies during concept design. Just click the align button, hover over a plane, and the view locks right in. Top view now fixed and aligns properly. North is up, south is down. There are a couple more notable features, the advanced brush and custom path. The advanced brush tool introduces a more efficient way to paint vegetation using procedural content generation. It allows freehand area painting across different materials or models with one-click vegetation scattering. You can activate it by clicking on tools and selecting advanced brush or by pressing the end key. Doing so will change the cursor to a brush icon. Vegetation assets can be added either during painting, by clicking the plus button, or afterward. Notice how effortless it is to place vegetation assets in this new update. Honestly, this is the exact feature I've been hoping for, and it's great to finally have it built right into the workflow. Adjustments are pretty much similar to the existing scatter tool. While painting, you can adjust the brush size with the bracket keys. Next, the new custom path feature can be found under the path tool in the top toolbar. It lets you place different assets along a path with more flexibility than before. You can add them directly from the D5 online library, including your favorites, recents, as well as from your local and team library collections. Once set up, these custom paths, with all included models, can be saved as presets to your library or exported to D5 Studio. It's a smooth way to reuse curated model paths across different projects. Just note that certain assets like procedural vines, decals, HDRIs, terrain, and lighting elements aren't supported in this tool. There's still a lot of new features to explore some minor fixes and other updates we didn't cover in this video. If you're curious about the full list, go check out the release notes linked in the description below. So tell me, what do you think of this update? Which feature are you most excited to test out? Let me know in the comments below. Like I said, this update really was unexpected in the best possible way. It's why D5 remains my go-to for creating fast, cinematic visuals. Some of these features, especially these new AI features like Smart Planting, AI PBR Material Snap, and the AI Agent have already made my workflow more efficient. If you're new to D5, I highly recommend you to check it out. I've also added a free trial link below so you can try it out for yourself. If you want to learn how I create cinematic scenes, go ahead and watch this next video. It goes deeper into the techniques that I use, from camera angles to cinematic compositions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.